Welcome back to episode four of the Situation Report. This is your host, Bob Faust. Right now, we're going to talk about checks. How you make a check, how you pass a check, how you fail a check in games of Scrappers. Scrappers is a post-apocalyptic skirmish war game by Osprey Games. And in there, small teams of highly dedicated and motivated individuals band together to explore the ancient Omega Zones, the areas that weren't completely annihilated in the Great Holocaust, known as the Triple Helix event, but were ultimately on the fringes and over time have become uh, overgrown and, and dilapidated, covered in mutated and, and bizarre terrain, and um, are, are treasure troves of hidden tech, ancient lore, etc. So these small crews, or known as scrapper crews, uh, are sent in by various factions to find what they can, recover them, and sell them off uh, or trade them for their organization to meet their goals or aims. In the game, anytime there is a chance of failure, um, players will make an imposed check on their D10 dice and do so in order to determine the success or failure of a given outcome. Most of the time, this happens in result of the execution of an action. So, for example, if this architect apprentice trooper uh, wanted to shoot at this Gamma Lord's mutant um, brute, bruiser brute, he would need to make an attack check versus that defender. And the outcome of that check would determine whether or not the mutant survived the encounter or if he was wounded and removed from play. Most of the game will use a D10 for the checks that are made. The exception to that is combat, where players will have a rate of fire for their weapons that will indicate how many dice are rolled, and then they will also have defensive dice based on their proximity to hard cover or any kind of terrain or concealment. And those factors out, and those factors will come together and, and then players will determine that their, their best result. The other uh, part of that is if they do come within one inch of each other through a charge action, now they're in close combat, so they'll be making multiple attack and defense dice checks based on their combat rating. So for now, let's just go back to a single, uh, single die check, and we'll resolve that. So let's say, for example, we had a climb check where a model wanted to climb the side of a building or a wall or a surface that they couldn't you know, hop over or jump over. Uh, in order to do that, in fact, let's just say... Our guy wanted to climb up here. Told you I'm not a pro at this. Let's just say our model wanted to climb up here. What would happen would be his player would declare, I want to make a climb check to scale up to the second level. And then the opponent would pick up his D10. He would then measure the distance from the ground level to that next area along the wall there. So that looks like it's going to be just over, or just under three inches in height. In this case, the rounds up to three. The player will then look at his model's combat rating, which in this case we'll call a four. He will roll a d10, adding four to that four for an eight. And then the opposed roll by the opponent will be a four plus three, which is a seven. To succeed at a check in scrappers, you need to equal or exceed the number. It's a meter beat system. So, in this case, he beat it by a point, no big deal. He then climbs up there, and he's ready to go for his next action next turn. If he'd failed that, then he'd be stuck down there still trying to find a foothold, and his action would be over. And that's pretty much it. Now, we do have something called a success bonus. In some cases, this really matters. Um, and then in combat, it's known as a damage bonus. One of the unique things about the Brink of Battle system that we've carried over into Scrappers is that the better you succeed at your check, the, the greater the odds of hitting a special effect or doing more damage in combat. So, for example, if I had a mutant power on a model and my success bonus was higher than the result of the opponent's overall check, um, that difference would, would mean something mechanically in the game. When it comes to combat, if you exceed 
your opponent's defense check um, by one point or more, the amount by which you, succeed, you exceed that number turns into a damage bonus that's added point for point to your damage check dice when you roll against that opponent's resistance. This is great, and it plays really well, and it feels right, because the better you are at shooting somebody or hitting them with a stick, the likelier they are to go down. It's a real-world translation that plays out beautifully in the game, but I'll also warn you, it makes this game deadly. So, like in real life, if you decide you want to waltz out in the open field, swinging your sword and choosing people off, you're going to probably get shot in the face, and that's going to be the end of you. So, play smart, play tight. Um, when it comes to multiple dice checks, so for example, let's say we were in close combat, and this bruiser mutant with that meat hook is going to take a swing at our good old architect here. Uh, the architect's going to have a 4. We'll say the bruiser has a 5 combat rating. We take the combat rating, divide it in 2, and round down. That's the number of base attack dice that the bruiser has. Uh, so he'll have 2, and because the architect has 4 combat, he will then have 2 as well. So the bruiser charged. He's now going to roll both of his attack dice, add plus 1 to his combat rating. So his combat rating for, goes from 5 to 6. He rolls two dice, and he adds his six to the highest result that he gets, which in this case is six. So his total attack check result is a 12. The architect will roll his, and he's got a two and a three with a four is going to be a seven. So a seven's his highest, and that means that the mutant successfully hit him with that meat hook. So for a basic illustration, without getting into any special rules, the 6 plus 6 and 12 versus the 7 is 5 points higher, count them 5, 5 points higher, so his damage bonus will be plus 5. That's not going to bode too well for our poor little architect. Now, once we've done the attack and defense checks to determine whether or not the attack was successful, we then move to the damage check. The damage check is a d10 roll opposed by a d10 roll from the opponent. The opponent takes his constitution rating, which is the last rating of the three, takes his constitution rating, adds any armor he has to that, which in this case we're going to give him three points of armor. We'll give him a tactical suit that he's wearing, so he's got armor of three, and we'll also give him an average constitution of four. So his total resistance check is going to be a d10 plus seven. We then take the bruiser, who's got a con of five, we add to it his little meat hook here that's going to give him two damage points. So now he's going to roll seven on a D plus a d10. But because he got a plus five damage bonus from how well he hit the guy, he gets to add that as well. So his seven now becomes a plus 12. So he'll roll d10 plus 12 versus d10 plus seven. So let's do it and see what happens. All right, the architect got luckier than usual. So his 9 plus 7 results in a 16 total resistance score. But over here, we have the mutant bruiser with his big flesh hook at a plus 12 and a 6. So he's rocking in with an 18 total. Now, being that he has to meet or beat the resistance check to cause an injury on the architect, we see that he succeeded in that. Now we have to determine how badly he hurt the guy. So, if you meet or beat a, defend, a defending resistance check, you will automatically shock that model. So we know at a minimum the architect is going to be shocked. He beat his score 18 to 16 by 2 points. The architect's a true human life form, and his wound threshold is 5 or greater. So only doing 2 points more than the resistance check simply shocks him. But if he had done five or more points in the difference, he would have outright wounded the guy and he had been plucked from the board. And so one more time, because his wound threshold was five or greater, the mutant would have to do five or more points beyond the resistance check with his damage check in order to wound that model. Otherwise, in this case, he's just shocked. Now, that means that if, say, if he had an action token on him at the time, once he becomes shocked, that action token is lost. And he's not going to get to do anything else this turn but sit there and bleed. 
And then, of course, if no one else shocks him again, which would, you know, in this case for a true human, would require three more, you know, two more times. So if he got shocked three times in the same game turn, then he'd be automatically uh, wounded and removed from play. But in this, in this scenario, he'll just get wounded that, or uh, shocked that once, and then next turn he would recover in the end of the cigarette phase. And that's that in a nutshell for making checks. The only other checks that we want to talk about before we close this segment out will be random checks. A random check is a mechanism um, that we also brought over from Brink of Battle, which allows the players to generate a number between 0 and 9, and then in certain circumstances, um, the higher rolling player will determine the direction of the path of whatever is being randomly generated. So, for example, some scenarios you'll play that will release here down the line, items will move, things will move on the table involuntarily or in their own way, and then the player who rolled higher is the one that's going to determine what direction that goes in. So a random check is that each player grabs a d10 and they roll. That's a great example here, a 10 and a 9. You subtract the lower number from the higher number. So the random check result in this case is a 1. If this were reversed, well we roll this again, I mean 6 to 8, so we now have a 2, etc. It's always subtracting the lower from the higher, and then, of course, if a direction is intended that's not listed specifically, the higher rolling player will determine what direction that's in. That takes the substitutes of the, the mechanism of a scatter die. Scatter dice can cause arguments. This doesn't. This is pretty much a straightforward deal. And, of course, if you do roll the same number, 4 from 4 is 0. So it sits right there. It doesn't go anywhere. That's a random check. A panic check is something that's done with the command rating of a model. And if a model is within the command radius of its commander, and the commander is not shocked or anyhow incapacitated, he may use that higher number. So, for example, this architect commander has a 6 command rating. So he has a 6-inch command radius. This means that when his... Let me get this guy over here a bit... Let's say this guy was um, forced to make a panic check for whatever reason, and he had only a commander rating of 4, he could use his commander's rating of 6 and, and replace that. And then it's just a straight check from there. The only major difference is that the opposed roll for a panic check is one that adds the number 5. It's known as a difficulty check. Anytime in Scrappers you see that an opposed check is a difficulty with a number in brackets, that number is what's added to the result of the d10 to determine the opposed roll amount. So, for example, with a route check, it's a d10 plus 5. With this guy's command of 4, he would be a point at disadvantage, but now that he's using his commander's command rating instead, he's able to make it on a 6. So it's a 8 plus 6 is 14, versus a 2 plus 5, which is 7. He passes the, the panic check and doesn't run off. The final thing we want to discuss, actually two more, uh, strategy check, which is done in the orders phase. That's where we determine who has the edge in the break. That's done between the commanders of both teams. If your commander is shocked or out of play because he was wounded, you're rolling a straight D10. The architect faction trains their subordinates to be as mission equipped and ready as the commander. So any veteran that's ready on the table could make that instead with his command ready. Um, if the commander was wounded or if he was shot. And so it's a straight up d10 versus d10 opposed roll. If there's a draw, you re-roll. And if it's a second draw or a uh, second tie on that roll, then the player who had the edge last turn gets the break this turn. And so that's a strategy check. And then the final thing you'll do are the route checks. Route checks or just like every other check, but let's say I've got these three models on the architect force missing out of action, and I've lost one, two, let's go this guy here, two from a Gamma Lords team. Let me back this up here. So what will happen is, if your commander is ready or active, um, actually it's going to be ready at the time you make the route check in the sit rep phase, um, then you can use his command rating for the route check. And that'll just be a D10 plus the command rating. So let's say the commander for the Gamma Lord Force is a command rating 5, 
He would roll a 9, plus 5 is a 14. And his opponent, the architect player, would look at how many models were wounded from that guy's force, which in this case are 2, and then he'd roll a d10 and add that number. So the 8 plus 2 would be a 10, but versus the 9 plus 5, uh, the Gamma Lords pass their test and stay in the fight. When it comes turn for the other one to get his chest done, now he's rolling, let's just say, a 5 plus the 6 that we already gave the commander before, and um, that'll be an opposed roll of 3 plus 3. The opposed roll is always a d10 plus the number of wounded models from the force that's actually making the route check. And here again, meter beat. Now, if both pass, good to go, you move on to the next turn. If one passes, one fails, the winner is the guy that passed. And if they both fail, the game's a draw. Both parties drag off their wounded, grab whatever they have in hand, get the hell off the table. And that is how you make checks in games as scrappers. See you next episode. Thanks.